Hello everyone, and welcome to the first video in a series I'm doing on an ATV trip across Newfoundland, Canada that me and my friends did in September of 2018. The trip involved eight days of riding. We had totaled around 1,200 kilometers, and that was about 750 miles. There was 12 people on 11 machines. We had two Can-Am commanders. We had three CF Moto Z4 side-by-sides, one of which was a 1000, two were 500s. There were two Can-Am Outlanders, a 650 and a 1000, a Honda Rincon 680, a Can-Am Maverick Trail 1000, a Suzuki King Quad 750, and a Honda Pioneer 700. So all in total, we had seven side-by-sides and four ATVs this year. Newfoundland's an island, so the only way to get there with your ATV is by boat. There's a 6 hour ferry to the west coast or a 16 hour ferry to the east coast. We took the 16 hour ferry over and the 6 hour ferry back. During our trip we had excellent weather, excellent trails, a lot of laughs and we took in some of the nicest scenery imaginable. If you're interested in learning more about this trip so that you and your friends can do it, go to my website at www.crossingnewfoundlandbyatv.com Everything you need to know is on my website including GPS tracks and a handy day-by-day -day guide. If you like the content in this video, please subscribe and click the notification button. In this video, I'm going to show you our road trip to the ferry terminal in Nova Scotia where we catch the boat to get over to Newfoundland. And I'm also going to show you our first day on the trail which was Argentia to Clarenville, Newfoundland. We took about, I don't know, eight or nine hours to do that day and it was 145 kilometers which is about 95 miles. Both Bruce and I bought drones this year and we took them with us on this trip. So we get some really nice aerial footage that we haven't had in years past. My friends and I that did this trip all live in various parts of Nova Scotia. So that means to get to the ferry terminal, we're doing a road trip. Anywhere from three hours to six and a half hours or more depending on traffic, weather, things like that. Everyone has such a good time on this trip. No one minds the drive. And some of us haven't even seen each other since last year. So it was really nice to meet up outside the ferry terminal when we were offloading all of our machines. That's nice. You just get the tire shine, just spray the whole thing. Pretty well. Howie on his trusty old Honda 680. He says he possibly will trade it in for one of those new talons when they come out later this year if he likes it. And Paul has his brand new CF Moto Z Force 1000 in the blue in the back. Sharp looking machine. How you doing, man? Good, good. Hey Dan. Yeah. You too? Yeah. Hey Bobby. Yeah. Hey, I'm Patrick. Patrick, how are you? Nice to meet you, Eric. Jeez, we got some good weather. Hey, this is the first drone shot of our new videos this year. Uh, Bruce and I both got a drone this year and uh, this is uh, taken from his right now where he's just doing an aerial of where we have the vehicles parked and then in a second here you'll see the ferries off in the distance. They're great for getting some really nice shots. You'll see later in some of the other videos for this year too. Um, it's nice to be able to send them up over lakes and mountains and things like that when we were traveling to get some really nice shots. So once we've got all our machines offloaded and all ready to go, we just drive back across the street, which is where I'm going here now, to uh, get back into the ferry terminal parking lot so we can get in line to get on the boat. But the very first thing we did that day when we showed up is we showed up at the terminal in our trucks with our trailers on the back. You show your ID, you get your tickets, you drive through the parking lot, you 
go back across the street where we just were, offload your machines, and then they let you come back in the back entrance here so you don't have to drive your ATV back up on the road to get in. Once your group of ATVs is in the lot, someone will show up with a car or a truck that works for the Marine Atlantic ferry terminal system there and they will escort you through the lot to the proper area where you're supposed to get in line with the other ATVs and motorcycles to wait to get on the ship. One of the nice things about taking your ATV or your side-by-sides on the ferry is that you're basically the first ones on and the first ones off. So when you get onto the other side, as soon as they tell you to get into your cars or your trucks or whatever, you have to get down there on your ATVs right away because you're the first ones off and if you're late, they'll start letting the trucks go and the cars and then you don't want to have to wait for all that. Excuse me. Where'd Paul go? We heard songs last night. <laughs> you actually got a good voice. Good voice. When you were serenading Patrick last night. Yeah. yeah. You were quite oh, is that what you guys call it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you shouldn't be tired today. You slept enough. No, I don't. I was on last night. Yeah, I know. I didn't say you were late. Yeah. Uh, I just reset my trip meter to see how many kilometers we do over this entire trip. A lot of people ask me if it's difficult to find the trail once you get off the ferry and the answer is no it's not. As soon as you drive off the ferry like we are here you only have to drive about three or four hundred meters and then you turn left off the main road and you drive down a paved road again for about another mile, mile and a half maybe and you're going to come to the entrance of an old military base and as soon as you get there the, uh, the trail starts on your left hand side. You, you really can't miss it. Here's the entrance of the base and then the trail's just up here on the left. switch back and forth sometimes between my newer GoPro and my old one, but 
I had cleaned the machine too well, I guess, and the uh, plastics were a little bit slick. And no matter where I put the ram mount with the suction cup, it didn't seem to stay on very long. It kept sliding off, so I ended up putting it away after a few tries and I didn't use it very much this whole trip. <laughs> no, go ahead. Go ahead. John got me pretty wet there, which was pretty funny. Uh, I mean, I get a rain suit on, so it doesn't really matter anyway, but the year before, <laughs> I filmed pretty much the same thing. If you remember, if you had watched last year's video in, it was uh, Dwayne who got me pretty good in the same spot. Yeah, they're slippery. Yeah, this wash has been here for years. Videotape everybody coming up here. Got the remainder. Lunch. We have driven by this place several times over the years and uh, never really bothered to stop in here and this year we decided to stop in for an early lunch, take some pictures and uh, barbecue up some great deer meat that uh, John had gotten from a deer the last, uh, last hunting season the year before. It started to get really dusty here uh, pretty much for the rest of the day until it rained at one point for a few minutes then it went away but the nice thing about the rain was that it kept the trail dust down until we got to the hotel you can see here in a few of the shots just how dusty it started to get on the trail that's why I tell everybody that you should always bring a full-faced helmet when you do this trip or at least some really good goggles and a dust mask Dust. Brutal. Come on, blow. Blow up. There you go. There you go. Did he go to when hunt seems to start over here? Probably now. I think yeah, West side today, I think. Yeah. It will be open. Yeah. It was open last year where As you could probably tell already, we like to stop and chit chat off and along the trail. And at this point in the day here, we weren't too far from Clarenville, maybe an hour and a half. We had to get some gas. <laughs> As you can tell, one of the features that comes with CF motos is horns. And uh, Paul was uh, getting good use out of his that day. Then we started to get a bit of rain here. And uh, it wasn't really that heavy, but it was actually nice. It was a nice break because it gave us a little bit of a reprieve from the dust. And we pulled into a gas station here at Gooby's, filled up. And one of the nice things was uh, Bruce's father lives not far from that area over in Newfoundland. So we uh, met up with him for a bit before we continued back on our way. The 
water's low this year. It's usually running through there pretty fast. This is the turn off to St. Jude's Hotel. It's right off the trailway. Really, it couldn't be any easier to find. It's a couple minutes drive into the hotel and uh, the guys were happy to get there that night and uh, unwind a little bit and have a shower to get rid of some of that trail dust. There's several places to stay in Clarenville if you want, but we like St. Jude's. Uh, it's got a great restaurant. Um, the hotel staff are friendly and they have several doors on the front and the back of the building where you can park your machine right out in front of your room and so it makes it easy to bring in back and forth your luggage and your gear and stuff like that and keep an eye on the machines too really. Everybody else coming? Gee, she didn't lose them did you? Yeah they're coming. Here's the first time I took my drone out that day. Bruce had his out a few times earlier. This was the first time I had mine out and uh, I was still pretty much a novice with it here. I had hardly had a chance to use it at all before I took it on this trip. So that was just kind of learning as I was going here.